Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I'm happy to be here. My name is Pastor Steve Omodex, Adek, Senior Pastor Full Ama Fellowship Church. Welcome to Sifana Injili. Uh, this morning, I'm so excited, my spirit, to be back here again and just to speak a word of grace to you. And I want to speak to you today on a very interesting topic of You Are Not a Loser. That is the topic of my sermon today, You Are Not a Loser. Uh, I'll base my teaching today on the book of uh, Judges, chapter number 11 verse number one down to nine and I will read by the grace of God. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor and he was the son of a prostitute and Gilead begat Jephthah and Gilead's wife bore him sons and his wife's children, uh, sons grew up and they thrashed uh, out Jephthah and said unto him thou shalt not inherit in our father's house for thou art the son of a strange woman. Now Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there, and, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. Praise the name of Jesus. Now uh, uh, this morning I want to speak to you very, very to your heart about you are not a loser. Uh, child of God, many are the days you've had people telling you uh, that you are not good enough to do A, B, C, D. Many are the times you've had people telling you that where you're coming from cannot look like where you are going. And it is very much valid for people to tell you that where you are coming from cannot be compared with where you are going. I am coming from a place where um, um, people say that nothing good can come out of that man's house or nothing good can come out of that family. And I'm here to stand as a testimony to you that God has specialized or God is best known in picking people who are torn apart, people who have been forgotten, people who have been rejected to make them people of valor and people of honor in the society. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, the Bible says there's a man called Jephthah, and Jephthah uh, was a son of a harlot. I don't know if you understand this very carefully, but follow me closely, child of God. This morning you have woke up and you're watching me, or you're maybe you're watching the repeat of this program. I want you to understand this very clearly, that Jephthah was a son of a harlot. Or rather, Jephthah was a son of a prostitute. Now, it was not the wish or it was not the plan of Jephthah to be born in a family that was as it was. It was not his desire. He did make an application for the father or the mother to give birth to them, yet the mother was an illegitimate woman. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that he was born illegally. He became an option to his brothers. It got to a point whereby Jephthah had grown up, and when he had grown up, uh, it got to a point whereby he was now becoming of age. And we all understand in the setup of a family unit, when a man becomes of age, there will be need for him to ask of the father for what belongs to him. And so when he, he got to that age, about that age when the brothers knew that this man will ask of our father for inheritance, they kicked him out and they said very hurtful words to him. And they told him that you are a son of an illegitimate woman, my God. You know, there are people who are, have been crafted or they have been made or they have been sent from hell to torment your life by telling you that you are not worthy of the blessings that God is releasing to you. There are people who are, have been made, have been wired by the, uh, the enemy to come and speak into your life and to speak into your spirit to tell you that you are not worthy of what you are today. And I want you to understand one thing. It was not that they came there by mistake, but God allowed them to torment you so that you can be pushed to a new dimension. Man, I feel like preaching this morning. They, they, they came in your life so they can push you to the next dimension of your life. And when they told Jephthah, let's go to the Bible, when they told Jephthah that you are not worthy of our, our father's possession because you are a son of a strange woman, they chased Jephthah from, uh, from, the, from Gilead and they chased him out of Israel and he went out and dwelt in the land of Tob. He went to a land far away from the brothers. These were stepbrothers who did not believe in this man called Jephthah. And I'm speaking to someone this morning who is in the same situation, who is in the same predicament. Probably you are watching me and you have fled from home not because you wanted to move, but because the environment around home is not conducive for you.
You are coming from a broken family. Your father and your mother, they separated and you had to move with one party. Or maybe you are coming from a home whereby both parents never believed in you and they chased you out of home. Or you are coming from a home whereby you went, you came in with your mom and the other family could not accept you and so you left. You are living a life that you are living alone. I have a word of hope and grace for you this morning. But God says that you are not a loser. Praise the name of Jesus. You are not a loser. No matter what people say about you, you are not a loser. And the Bible says that when they chased the man Jephthah from home, one day there was war in the land. And when the war arose, my good Lord, when the war arose, they had to look for this man called Jephthah. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the process of time. Let me hold it there. Uh, Judges chapter number 11, verse number 4. The Bible says, and in the process of time. It came to pass that in the process of time. Now, people of God, you realize one thing about God, that any time people put you in a corner, people, people view you in a certain dimension, people view you in a given way, God will always take you out of that cocoon and take you somewhere else and he'll begin to work on you, not overnight like a mushroom, but it will take time for God to work over you. Now, listen to me carefully. For you to be a winner, you have to begin to build muscles to become a winner. Because for you to be a winner, you must fight some battles. And, and so Jephthah was, was despised because, because of how he was, because of his mother's mistakes. There are people who are despised in this life today, not because they want to be despised, but because of their families, because of where they're coming from, because of the mistakes of the fathers, because of the mistakes of their mothers, because of the mistakes of the family, the clan. And so God is calling you out as a peculiar person. God is calling you out as a seed that is incorruptible, my God. God is calling you out as a seed that has gone through the fire, has tested the, 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 the heat, and so he has refined you as gold. So when you, when you come out of this mess people can say surely from what we saw and what he's become this is the handwork of God and I'm speaking to someone who right now this morning or this afternoon you're watching me and you're saying man of God that is me you're speaking to yes it is you I'm speaking to this morning I want you to understand that Jephthah returned back to the city not as he left but he came back as a man who was honored and respected by everybody in the community now the Bible says this that it came to pass that in the process process of time for God to work uh, through you, for God to ensure that you can be called a son in the kingdom, for God to ensure that the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone, you have to go through the process of time. One of the biggest problems people do today in life is um, they want everything to work for them overnight. God is, does not work like a mushroom. That today morning, there is nothing when you come, the following morning is up and it's ready to be eaten by people who eat them. Hallelujah. God has to take you through the process. The Bible says that in the process of time, that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it came so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch for Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Now look at this. It took time for God to deal with Jephthah. Because number one, he was hurt. The family that he had trusted, he had loved them over the years. They never showed any resentment towards him when he was a baby. But when he became a man, they chased him out because they were, they were fighting for inheritance. They chased him out. He felt neglected. He felt abused. He felt that everything that he had ever dreamed of, or dreamt of, of uh, becoming of a, a proud father to a, a proud son to his father, who can actually have a, a part of his father's inheritance, they chased him out. And so I believe he left and went when he was hurt. I believe he left and went when everything around him did not make sense to him. I believe he was asking himself, why me? The same question you may be asking yourself over and over. Why me? Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? But God is telling you this morning that it had to happen that way so that when you come back, you will be a testimony. Now, follow me closely. The Bible says that it came after the process of time that the children, the children of Ammon made war against Israel. Now, the Bible says that um, this man left Israel and went to the land of Tob. And in the, in the land of Tob, he, he was like a refugee. He went in a place that he did not know because the, the environment that he was brought in was against him. Have you ever been in a place whereby the environment that you are in has become unconducive? I have been there before, where everybody celebrated me. Then one day I woke up and everybody turned up against me. 
not because it was my wish, but because someone who was superior than me went and fed poison to them in my absence. And when I came back, everybody said he's not fit to be here. And I had to leave and go to a place whereby it was me and God alone. It was a place where God had to deal with my situation. He had to deal with my anger. And in the process of time, he made me come back as a testimony. So many people ask me, how comes you preach and you're just a young man? You need to hear my story. You need to hear my testimony. Because God had to deal with me in stages. It took me over 10 years to build uh, the work of, for God to build uh, the, my, my confidence in preaching to, to, uh, for preaching to people. It took over 10 years for God to work on my character. It took over 10 years for God to let me forgive them that hurt me. And in the process of God working on me, he set up war in the other camp. And when the war came in that camp, they had no one else to run to, but they had to come to me. So when I look at the story of Jephthah, I relate with it as my own story. The same way this is going to relate with you. Nothing good comes overnight. Every good thing that you see today, someone has invested time for it to be here. For, for even us to be here to preach to you, someone had to set up this beautiful uh, uh, station for us to come and be a blessing to you. Somebody shout hallelujah in your house. Give God a better hallelujah in your house. Amen. And this morning I want you to understand that when the time came after the, after the process of time, when war was waged, the elders, now listen, they chased Jephthah as a young man. But for them to call Jephthah back, the young people who chased him, who are the brothers, could not come. They had to send elders to come and pick him. Now, what is the symbolic of elders in this context? It means that they looked at Jephthah, the rejected stone. God says that the rejected stone will become the chief what? The chief cornerstone. And so they knew the way we look at that man, he is a wise man. We can only send elders because elders are wise people. Because if we go, he will not come with us. So the Bible says they sent elders, and the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. My good Lord. Let me take a break, and then I'll come back after this break. Please don't go anywhere. Invite your friends. Text your friend right now. Tell them to switch to Biashara TV, because this is going to be very powerful this morning. Amen. We'll be right back after the break. Steve Omadex and the Blessed Family Ministry is reaching nations, touching lives, and transforming generations with the holistic living word of God while fulfilling the Great Commission from village to village, town to town, city to city, to right where you are. Be part of this great move. Welcome to Sifa Nigeli, the only show that brings you nothing but the best of gospel music, inspirational word, and of course prayer that will touch your life and transform you completely. Listen to me, people of God. I know of many people today that their visions are still very much alive, that the greatness they have is still much alive, but the people around them have made them feel like what you carry is not going to mature. You may be driving, you may be a cocotini driver, but that is not the end of the road. A time is coming when one day God, who is in heaven, will show his face and mercy upon you to drive your own car. I testify. Join us every single morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Yashara TV, business at its best.
Welcome back to Sifa na Injili, right here on Biashara TV, the only show that brings you nothing but the best of the gospel, the right gospel, morning worship, and of course, a word of prayer that commands your day. And I was speaking on you and not a loser, basing on Judges chapter number 11, verse number 1, all the way up to number 10, or number 11. And so the Bible says this, that when they sent elders, they came and told Jephthah, come and be our captain. Other versions say, be our commander. Other versions say, be our leader. Other versions say, be our chief. Let me tell you, child of God, the people that rejected you, they are coming back to look for you. And not in the same capacity that you left, but in a bigger capacity than the way you left. Because when you are rejected by men, God steps in the picture and he redirects men to you. I say that again. When men reject you, God steps in the picture and he redirects men to you. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why even in the Bible, we begin to realize there's a man who is called King David. One day King David, before he became the king, one day his father could not believe that he can be the king. 
And the best they could do for David was to tell him to go angalie makondo. He looks after the cattle and sheep and goat. But one day there was a need in the, in the, in the land of Israel. When the uncircumcised Philistine called Goliath would come and begin to abuse Yahweh, the God of Israel. And David was, the, the, the whole army could not fight, even Saul could not fight. And what God did was this. He was equipping a man who was rejected to look after sheep and cattle. And the man that was rejected became the cornerstone to fight Goliath and bring him down. The Bible reminds me of a man called Joseph who was sold by his brothers to eat to Egypt he was sold and because and they lied to Jacob his father they said that your son whom you love the most has been eaten by the wild animals and I'm speaking this from my heart to you maybe some of you, you people wrote your obituaries they said he's dead they said uh, when he left the city when he left the village he went to the city and we have never seen him after 10 years God is calling you back home He's telling you, pack your bags and go back home. He's telling you that it doesn't matter where you've been, go back home. Because when you step back in that land, they will say, surely this one, God has worked on him. He, they will say that it is God who has worked on him. And I'm telling you this morning that this is your message. God is telling you, don't worry about what they did to you. Jephthah was rejected. The Bible says that when they told him to come and be our captain, that we may fight the children of Ammon, Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me? and expel me out of my father's house. My God, Lord. Did you not hate me and even chase me out of my father's house? Did you not say that I'm a son of an illegitimate woman? Did you not say that I'm a son of a harlot? Did you not even take my inheritance and left me with nothing? You even took my clothes. You even burnt my home. You even said nothing good can come out of me. Why do you now come to me and ask me that you are in problems and you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Listen to this child of God. They even added more value to, to him. They told him, you are not just going to be the commander, but you will be the head over the household of Gilead. You will become the father of this family. The family that rejected you, I prophesy to you this morning and I speak a word of grace to you. That the people that rejected you, they are coming back to you. And they will say, don't just come as a son, but come as the father. Praise the name of Jesus. Come as the sole breadwinner. Come as that person who we will look up to and get hope. Because God allowed it to happen. So that when you come back, you may strengthen your brothers. God tells Simon, Simon, I have Jesus tell Simon, that Simon, Simon, I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. But when thou art converted, come back and strengthen your brothers. Because Jesus knew that at a given point, you will denounce me. You will leave after, you, after, after you, the cock has crowed. You will leave and go and quit ministry. But when you come back, you are not a loser. When you come back, you are more than a conqueror. When you come back, you are not just the normal person they sent away, but you are coming back with the fire for God. You are coming back with added knowledge and wisdom on how to handle people who have been despised in life before. Praise the name of Jesus. Now listen to me as I finish up, child of God. Don't be an opinion of those who dislike you. Follow me closely. Don't be an opinion of, to those who dislike you but be an option to them in times of trouble. Many people, when they are hurt, they carry the heart to the next level. You will never graduate to the next level of life if you don't let the heart in this level to go with this level. Because every new level comes with greater responsibilities. Every new level will come with new people. If you don't let the heart in your heart now to go, there is no way the next level you will be in will be of benefit to those people in that level. Because when you carry the heart of this level to, to the next level, you'll hurt the people in the next level. And the people coming in your life in that level, they don't want to be hurt. They want to be encouraged. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why when Simon Peter even denounced Jesus, at the end of the day, Jesus said, and Peter, who do people say I am? He said that you are the son of God. And God, Jesus said that this one flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but the spirit of the living God. And then he said, upon you, Peter, I will build the church. You are the rock. 
from today. I will build the church upon you. Why? Because at some point, Peter quit ministry. He went away. He, was, he, be, he left and he felt rejected because he had caused the Son of Man to be hanged on the cross. Not knowing that God had to allow Christ to go on the cross to die for the entire humanity. Not just him alone. Hallelujah. And you see, child of God, as I finish up, this is what I want to tell you. Because God is with you. He is faithful not to abandon you. And in the time of need, for them that rejected you, he will make them look for you. Praise the name of Jesus. Play, praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, that he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Praise the name of the Lord. Thou you, uh, unto you, there of which believe he is precious, but unto them which he be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. That is King James Version. The people that rejected you, God says, I have laid you down. I have laid you down in Zion as a chief precious stone. Anything that is precious has to go through the process. God is telling you this morning that you are not a loser. Because when they hurt you, they put in your mind the mentality of a loser. They put in your mind the mentality of nothing good can come out of you. They put in you the mentality that you cannot be lifted. But God is saying that I'm going to lift you even beyond what they thought that you can be. Because Jephthah became an option to the brothers in times of trouble. And they came and looked for him. They brought with them options that the normal eye could not see. Praise the name of Jesus. Now we see even the name Jephthah being mentioned in the Bible in the book of fame, Hebrews chapter number 11. A man who was a nobody, a man who had nothing. In the book of Hebrews, wall of fame, the name Jephthah is mentioned. And I look at Jephthah, I look at my life. I look at your life. I look at how you've been crushed. I look at, at how things have been tough on you. God is telling you this morning, are you willing to let go the past? Are you willing to let God work on you? And in the process of time, he will pick you up. Mephibosheth in the book of 2 Samuel was rejected by everybody. He went to Lodeba, a place of, of, of despair, a place of no remembrance, a place of no communication, a place where people never re remembered him. But when David became the king, he said, Is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for the sake of Jonathan? And you are that kind of a person. God is saying, I want your kindness to you. I want to call you back home. I want to work on you. Huh. And I'm telling you, after these prayers, today, you will call us and tell us that I heard the voice of God. And I went back. And guess what? I became the chief cornerstone. You will call the numbers on the screen. We will be glad to hear the testimony. Write on the emails on, on Beashara TV. Let us hear your testimony. We are, we are here to hear from you. If you are getting blessed this morning, t call those numbers right now. There is someone who is waiting to hear your testimony. Someone who is willing to welcome you to church. Someone who is willing to, to say that surely this is the hand of God. I want to pray with you. Just wherever you are, I know God is coming straight into your house as you go to work. And he's coming to touch your life. And he's coming to change some situations about you. The people that rejected you, I see them coming for you. I see them look for you. And they're not coming just because they want, because, but they're coming because there's an assignment upon your life that they cannot fulfill. They cannot graduate from on that assignment on them until you show up. Mighty Father, in the name of Jesus, look at this dear viewer. Look at this ardent follower of this program. The Lord, I know they've been crushed. I know they've been to that place where they say nothing good can come out of me. Not because they want to, but because, Lord, situations around them have made them feel like we cannot rise beyond this, this, this level. But today, Lord, you're speaking into their hearts and their spirits, and you are telling them that it is not over until you say it is over. You are speaking into this lady's life when even the husband rejected her and kicked her out of the house. You are telling her that man is coming back. And he's coming back because he has realized that without the woman in his life, he cannot graduate to other levels. Mighty Father, the rejected stone is becoming the chief cornerstone. The King of glory, you are the Lord who says you pick up from the miry clay 
and you set up the people that were rejected to sit with kings and queens. This is a testimony that I've seen in my own life. So shall you do that for them that are watching me this morning. The Lord that will look back and say, surely goodness and mercy, O oh God, have followed me all the days of my life as I dwell in the house of my father forever. The King of glory this morning, I'm speaking to that young man who has got to a point of giving up. You got the first wife, he left, second one left, third one left, and you look at your father, the same thing has been happening. I break those cycles in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you are settling down because God is working a miracle for you this morning. We have received testimonies that people have, have seen God through this, this, this program, and you are not an exception. May you receive your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Testify with us. Let us know what God has done in your life. And you will say that God has done it. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, dear viewer, thank you for tuning in this morning. It's, it's amazing just to be here and speak to your heart and your spirit of what God is doing. And let me tell you one thing that I was praying God drop in my spirit. You may be a biological error, but you're never a divine error. You may not have been born in wedlock, but God says before you are formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. And so you are not an error. I want to challenge you. Call us. We are waiting. Someone is waiting to hear from you. Call the number right now on your screen. Someone is waiting to pray with you, to, to, uh, to lead you to church, to bring you to church, and we will be glad to, sh to hear from you. And even call, call us all the numbers, the emails running on your screen 24-7. Call those numbers. We will be glad to hear from you. And we know that this, this day you will not be a loser because God says above all things, you are more than a conqueror. Until next time, I've been your host, Pastor Steve Adek Jr. or uh, Steve Omodex. Many people call me that. I don't mind. See you next time, same time, same station, and of course, right on that seat. God bless you.